welcome back. So before the break, we talked about the fluctuation of the perceptive and motor system that lead to a certain difficulty in establishing thresholds. This led to the use of detected to undetected ratio criteria, usually 50%. But what does that mean for our daily lives? Ever heard your name in a noisy room? Or thought you recognized a person or a song before realizing you were completely wrong? Or ever felt your phone vibrate in your pocket, then picking it up only to be confronted with a complete absence of notification, just your phone wondering if everything's okay with you? Fear not. If statistics heard you think that, they would take your hand and reassuringly explain to you how it isn't surprising that an amalgam of different fluctuations, whether they are from the muscles twitching in your leg, your pants causing friction with your skin, or just from your overall level of alertness because of all the coffee you've been drinking, can lead to sudden peaks of activation that reach awareness. The signal detection theory studied the question of how people unconsciously make predictions on what they perceive in our fluctuating and noisy environments. It's important to realize that every signal is a continuum, right? Like, there's more chance that I mistakenly categorize Elijah Wood as Daniel Radcliffe than as Melissa McCarty. And that's why at the University of Leipzig, they would check if I differentiate them at least more than half of the time to make sure I really know there are different wizards. I mean, hobbits. I mean, people. If they had to consider fluctuation in their laboratory, imagine in our messy natural habitat where there's many more sources of variation. And that's not to mention top-down processing. We saw last week that expectations can alter classification. You know, with the old lady hiding in the young one's neck. But there's also a sense of importance that we can't grant to specific signals. Like if I'm expecting an important call. What that would do is lower my threshold for what sounds like a phone to make sure I don't miss it, to the risk of wrongly classifying a similar noise as my own ringtone. At the other end of the spectrum, if I'm at the bar, completely consumed by anguish, and somebody comes up and talks to me, I may fail to register that noise as potentially a signal worth picking up on. <clears throat> now, about your phone thinking you're going crazy, you may want to start putting louder or more obnoxious notification signals to remove any ambiguity, no matter how preoccupied you are. You'll find that older people usually master pretty quickly the art of figuring out just the most awkward ringtones to blast at them all. The thing to remember from the signal detection theory is that, in the background, the brain constantly makes predictions on what it thinks it's perceiving, but it's always in the presence of internal and probably external noise as well. That will be one of the major themes of this course, another one being that, well, pop-down processing. 